Okay, well, welcome everyone. We'll get um, our presentation on the go here. It's two minutes past seven and we won't, don't want to keep you here too long this evening. So thank you again for joining us. I'm Cindy Erickson, Tour Coordinator with Westworld Tours and Women Explorers, and I'll be facilitating the presentation this evening. Joining me to tell you all about this bucket list trip to the land of fire and ice is our General Manager at Westworld Tours and Women Explorers, Leanne House. Welcome, Leanne. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Before we jump into the presentation, I just have a couple of uh, things that I just want to go over with you, a couple of housekeeping items. Questions. We do encourage you to ask questions at any time throughout the presentation. That being said, we do have everybody on mute. So we do encourage you to type your questions into the Q&A box that's located on your screen. You can uh, type that question in there at any time throughout and we will get to um, them all at the end of our presentation. And if you've joined us on Facebook and you're watching us via Facebook, please just type your questions into the comment section on Facebook and we will uh, look at those as well at the end of our presentation. So for future presentations, right now we are just going to take a little break because we know December is a busy month for everyone. Um, the holiday season is fast approaching. So we're just going to take a bit of a break and we'll come back in the new year with some new tour presentations. And if you would like to receive invites to our future presentations and uh, timely information on our new tours and um, different promotions that we may have throughout the year, we do encourage you to follow us on Facebook and uh, sign up to receive our email newsletter. You won't be inundated with emails and you can unsubscribe at any time. So I'm going to launch a poll onto your screen right away here and you can let us know if you'd like to receive our email newsletter. And if you're already receiving them, you can let us know that as well. For those viewing on Facebook, you can, um, and you'd like to sign up, you can visit us at westworldtours.com slash subscribe. We'll just give everybody a chance to respond to that and then we'll move on. Okay, thank you everybody. For participating in that. As Western Canada's premier tube company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000. We present quality components including excellent accommodations, modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors, experienced courteous drivers, and luggage handling. We take in all the important sites and attractions, and we also include several meals throughout all of our tours. Thousands of passengers have chosen our first class style of touring, enjoying the great value, security, and stress-free environment, all while making new friends along the way. We know our tour directors enjoy getting to know you while on tour and love to see your familiar faces. So speaking of familiar faces, I'm going to launch another poll onto your screen. And we would love to know how many watching this evening have traveled with Westworld Tours before. So, um, and for anyone watching on Facebook, um, the, po the polls won't show up on your screen. So you can just send us a com um, leave a comment in the comment section on, on your page. So let's just let everybody have a chance to, to respond to that. It looks like 33% of you viewers this evening have traveled with us before, leaving 67% of you um, waiting to travel with us. So we look forward to welcoming you all on board, those past and new potential travelers with Westworld Tours. Thank you for participating in that. So as I mentioned, um, we love hearing from our passengers as well. And this is a review that was left by Arnold and Shannon who traveled with us to Iceland in 2019. Uh, I'll just read it quickly here for you. 
Our vacation to Iceland was fabulous. Westworld Tours did a great job of organizing the tour and the tour guides were wonderful. We will always remember the beautiful scenery, fine food and friendly people. Shannon's grandparents immigrated from Iceland to Canada in the summer of 1892 um, and they'd made prior arrangements to meet with family still living in Iceland. Um, they, um, they were able to visit the place where the family homestead once stood, hearing the stories and learning how families lived and worked uh, this diverse climate and landscape. So if you're joining this tour and have ancestors from Iceland, please let us know ahead of time and we will try our best to get you some information or make a visit to your homestead as well. So we ask you to join us for an adventure of a lifetime and, imme and immerse yourself in the history of culture this summer, July 22nd to the 31st, as we explore all that Iceland has to offer. Truly a bucket list destination unlike any other in the world. The land of fire and ice delivers a diverse landscape from impressive mountains, beautiful lakes and lovely beaches to glaciers and lava fields. Our complete Circle Island tour will have you visiting national parks, taking photos of magnificent waterfalls, discovering the serene beauty of glaciers and marine wildlife on whale watching boat tours, and of course, soothing your body and mind in the geothermal waters of the Blue Lagoon. At this point, I am going to turn the presentation over to Leanne. And I know Leanne traveled to Iceland previously, and I know she's very excited to share her experiences with you this evening. So um, take it away, Leanne. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, as Cindy said, I have traveled to Iceland uh, last summer, 2022, and it's one of my favorite places that I've traveled to in the world. I, I always get asked where is your favorite place. And I always um, tend to go back to Iceland. It's one of my favorites. So um, I hope that you will be able to join us on this exciting tour. Um, so as you can see here on the map, we travel all the way around Iceland. We see the entire country starting in Reykjavik in the lower left-hand corner. And we'll travel clockwise around to every corner. Um, and around every corner will be different landscapes, weather and adventure. And uh, so we'll begin upon arrival into Reykjavik. So arriving into um, Iceland, you're gonna be transferred to your hotel in Reykjavik and the rest of the, your day will be spent at leisure. So there's lots to do in Reykjavik um, and so many of the attractions and sites are within walking distance from your hotel. Uh, you'll arrive fairly early um, or mid morning, I guess depending on flights. Um, so you will need to kind of push through that first day and uh, and just kind of get over that jet lag and uh, get out and explore. We're there in the summertime, so you should have some decent weather to explore the city. But you can admire some of the unique metal, metal sculptures along the waterfront. And as you can see in the top left-hand corner of your screen, the Sun Voyager represents a Viking ship and symbolizes a journey into the unknown. And that's not too far from our hotel that you can walk there. So um, right smack dab in the middle and in the bottom left, or sorry, in the bottom right is the Hap Scream Schmier <laughs> um, Church. I, I did not pronounce that correctly at all, uh, but it's a Lutheran parish church. And it's one of the city's most famous landmarks and the largest church in Iceland. The church is 240 feet tall, making it the tallest building in Iceland. It was designed and uh, inspired by nature with the lower, or sorry, with the tower resembling the uh, basalt columns found in the country's lava fields. The roof is also a reference to nature as it is shaped like a mountain peak. And uh, you can take the elevator up to the top of the church's tower to see a panoramic view over the city. Uh, there is a fee for that, but you can enter the church and have a look inside for free. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the Harpa Concert Hall, which is just an architectural um, wonder here. It's, it's a modern and visually striking concert hall located close to the harbor 
right beside the um, the Sun Voyager. So you'll be able to see that along the harbor front. And then you can enjoy some shopping. Um, there's an ice bar, which I went um, to the last time I was there, or just wander around the streets. There's lots of little shops. And uh, if you're into getting an Icelandic sweater, you can look for those. There's also some secondhand stores where a lot of people purchase their sweaters from um, because they are a little costly, but there's just so much to do and explore and uh, just a nice way to kill the day and then head for an early early evening before we get set on our, our journey through Iceland. So leaving Reykjavik, you'll travel through Whale Tunnel which is one of the world's longest underwater road tunnels at almost six kilometers. So you'll see that in your bottom right-hand corner. And this is a photo I took of us coming up to the tunnel. So it, it takes us under the fjord that you see there on the, on the left-hand side. And it cuts the driving time down by about an hour prior to building the tunnel. They had to go all the way around. Um, so it, it definitely cuts out some time. From there, we'll visit a hot spring in West Iceland. And when I say hot spring, I don't mean we're going to relax and bathe in a hot spring. Um, as you can see the bubbles here and the steam coming off, this is one of the most powerful hot springs in Europe with a flow rate of 180 liters per second at a piping hot 100 degrees Celsius. So the water is literally boiling. Um, and the steam is coming off of it and it is hot. So we do not go in that water, but don't worry, we have opportunity to go into a hot spring. After that, we'll visit uh, the lava, lava waterfall and the children's fall. Um, and of course they have Icelandic names, but those are their um, English names. And uh, I'm not really great at pronouncing their language. If you've ever had a look at some of the, some of their words, it, they're quite quite challenging. Um, but I would have to say that these are probably one of my favorite waterfalls in Iceland. If you look in the top right-hand corner, they're just so unique. Um, like it's called the lava waterfall, the, the water is actually coming through the porous rock into, into the river there. And it's just so beautiful and so different from the rest of the falls that we'll get to see. And the last stop uh, that you'll make today is a, a hidden gem, really. Um, it's called uh, Cloagifer Canyon. And uh, there weren't a lot of people there when we visited. And it's a little bit smaller in comparison to some of the other waterfalls, but it's really beautiful. And that's the photo in the middle, um, bottom middle corner of your screen. And I do apologize. I'm I'm uh, not uh, really great with some of these words. And, uh, but... We'll make it through. So our next uh, stop is at the Glambauer Museum to learn about the turf farmhouses, as you can see in the top left and the bottom left. And they have uh, they are said to have stood on a hill at the Glambauer since the age of the settlement of 900 AD. Uh, so it's a neat little museum that you can walk through and wander the grounds. You can go inside some of the some of the turf houses and they have it set up as it would have been um, back when they were in use. And you can kind of walk through them and see kitchens. You can see some of the um, bedrooms and where they, you know, had all the supplies for the horses and, and tack and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really, it's a really interesting place to visit. And uh, there's an opportunity to have lunch there as well. And they make some homemade soup, which is really good. And so you never know uh, what you're going to see when you come around a corner in Iceland, uh, whether it's different weather or if it's wildlife. Um, and so for us that day uh, was these three little sheep. And they just stood there and looked at us like they were going to take on our bus. And uh, eventually they got out of the way, but uh, it was a great little photo opportunity. Uh, from there, you will take in a whale watching tour. So you will be provided um, with live commentary about the sites um, that we encounter on the on the whale watching experience. And you can be on the lookout for numerous types of wildlife, um, such as humpback whales, white beaked dolphins, mink whales, pilot whales, harbor porpoises, 
seals, and many species of offshore seabirds, such as the northern gannets, Arctic terns, uh, boomars, and of course, puffins. So you'll see um, in the bottom right-hand corner that you will get uh, what is, it's like a shell snowsuit type um, outfit. And you'll put that on over top of your clothes because it does get cool out on the water. So you'll, everyone will be dressing the same and you'll stay nice and toasty warm. So I do recommend bringing um, a toque and mitts to Iceland when you travel because you just never know what the weather's going to be like and also a rain jacket. Okay, so next up, one of the uh, most famous waterfalls in Iceland is Kudafoss, which is Waterfall of the Gods. And then, um, which you can see in the top uh, right-hand corner, and it's just, it's beautiful. There's a nice little walkway that you can walk along. There's a gift shop that you can uh, use the restrooms in and, and buy any souvenirs that you'd like as well. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful waterfall. From there, we'll travel out to the Chernese Peninsula um, which is just actually a few miles south of the Arctic Circle, um, and to the impressive geological horseshoe-shaped canyon, Asbergi, which is said to be where Odin's eight-legged horse once placed one of his feet on the ground here, leaving a deep imprint on the earth as it sprinted across the sky. And so geologists estimate the canyon to be formed roughly eight to ten million years ago, just after the last ice age. So um, you can probably get a good idea now of what I'm saying with the uh, hoof print in the top left-hand corner. So the canyon there is shaped in a hoof. And so we'll actually go right in there. And the two lakes um, kind of near the bottom of that picture are where we'll do a little hike out to. And when I say hike, I mean more of a, just a walk out to these beautiful lakes or ponds. They're more of a pond than a lake. Um, but they're just beautiful. And so you'll be able to have the opportunity to sit there. Um, last year, we had a picnic lunch there. It's just a really beautiful afternoon. And uh, the bottom right hand, sorry, the bottom left hand corner is a photo that I took. And uh, it's hard to capture all sides of the canyon. So this is kind of where we would be entering from the, the back of the horseshoe. And uh, in the middle of the photo is of uh, Husavik, which is where you'll be taking your whale watching tour out of and it's just a beautiful harbor with you can see the snow-capped mountains in the background and it was just such a beautiful day there. You'll also have the opportunity to search for some puffins and uh, this photo was actually just even taken on my iPhone so you can see how close we get to them and uh, if you're lucky you will be able to see them. We, um, we saw a, a big family or um, flock of them and uh, we snuck very quietly out of the bus and along the path, along the shore, uh, or on the top of the cliff, and just watching them fly out and fly back in. They're just such funny little creatures. So it was a really, really neat experience. And as I mentioned earlier, the landscape, wildlife, and weather changes around every corner. So now we're venturing into the volcanic Mivatten area, where you'll have the opportunity to wander through uh, the Dimborger lava field, known for the Icelandic Yule Lads. And if you have never heard um, of this folklore, it's an Icelandic Christmas folklore that depicts mountain-dwelling characters and monsters who come to the town during Christmas. And the stories are directed at children and are used to scare them into good behavior. Uh, the folklore includes both mischievous pranksters who leave gifts during the night and monsters who eat disobedient children. So you can find this book throughout Iceland if you have for your grandchildren or great-grandchildren or even your children or a friend. Um, I found one on Amazon. Um, I couldn't find an English version when I was in Iceland. I didn't grab it when I saw it, but so I ordered from Amazon and I read it to my kids every Christmas. And it's just a fun little um, keepsake, I guess, from Iceland and, and one of their traditions. So you'll see um, on the on the right hand side, the top is one of the caves that will that you can walk through in the lava fields. And then in the bottom right, you'll see the path that um, 
that we take through I, I can't remember exactly how long the trail is but you can go as far as you want and and like you can see it's a nice paved trail nice smooth um, and it's just a beautiful walk to go through and after that we will make our way to the magnificent and the second most powerful waterfall in earth in Europe Deddy Foss and as you can see from the picture in the top left hand corner this is a powerhouse waterfall it's you can see the the mist from so far back and it's just incredible so the falls are 100 meters wide and they drop 44 meters which is 144 feet it's a bit of a hike to get out to them but for the most part it's level and paved and then it turns into a gravel path and then once you get kind of really closer to the waterfall, as you can see in this top left hand photo, um, that you're going to run into some stairs and um, rock and it's a little bit more uneven, but you still have great views of the waterfall. Um, you can get up right close and get soaked um, because the mist does come off hot and heavy there. So it is really neat. Often you see rainbows, you can see that's on one of my photos and there's a rainbow there. It's easy to, to find those with the mist. Um, and then you'll just see some magnificent views. And so the bottom left is just a photo of it um, from further back and on the other side. But yeah, you can see the mist there and how how if you get close, you, you will get wet. So highly recommend rain jacket. And if you have a pair of rain pants, doesn't hurt to throw those in as well because there are plenty of opportunities to use them. So you will definitely not regret packing them. And after that, we will, like I said, the scenery changes once again. So now we're into volcanoes and calderas. Um, so we'll take a stroll along the rim of the Krafla caldera seen in the top um, left-hand side. And so this is the Lirinjunker uh, volcano, which has a total of 29 eruptions in recorded history and has erupted nine times between 1974 and 1984. So the bottom right-hand corner um, is a photo of our group last year with the volcano in the background. So um, it's kind of a nice little walkout. It is a little bit rougher once you get off the main path and boardwalk but it's definitely a doable walk, take it nice and slow. And uh, you just get this incredible landscape of volcanic lava that you know has hardened over time. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the wasteland. Um, and this is Nama Fall, which is a natural spring which stretches for almost a kilometer and has temperatures reaching over 200 degrees Celsius. And so there are many smoking fumaroles and boiling mud pots to wander around. It's a really interesting place to visit. And uh, looking at this photo, I can still smell it. <laughs> it's it's one of those places where you you don't forget. And uh, but it's it's really interesting. Just the colors you can't really see them that well in this photo, but the blues and greens and some of those mud pots in the water is just it's it's beautiful. It, it's they call it a wasteland, but it, it looks, it's really interesting. And then you're probably wondering what this little fellow is uh, is doing on our bus, but uh, we had this, this little feller try to join us um, when we stopped at the uh, Mod Rundular farm, which sits in the highlands of Iceland. And it's the highest location in Iceland that is inhabited by people sitting at an elevation of 1,539 feet. So this little guy thought he should uh, hop on the bus with us and come for a cruise, but we got him off and carried on. His dog friend was uh, quite concerned when the, when he got on the bus, but the dog did not get on to to get him off. So we had to we had to chase him off ourselves. Okay, so next now, like I said, every turn we we see something different. So now we're going to be traveling through the east fjords of Iceland. And so you'll see the rugged coastlines, the wild mountains, and just scenic views, photo stops along the way. Um, in the top left-hand photo, uh, photo, you can see one of the um, 
Vatnajoko uh, Glacier and one of its outlets. And it can be seen from the road. And I'll show you in the next slide how big this glacier is. It's one of the biggest, um, the biggest in Iceland, but one of the biggest in the world as well. And uh, it's just incredible how many times you see it along the way and uh, how big this it actually is. And then we'll also visit um, a fascinating Petra's mineral collection. So there's a bunch of different rocks and uh, minerals and uh, all the all the things found in the mountains in uh, near this area of Iceland. Okay, so this is just trying to give you a little bit of perspective on the glacier. So on the left-hand side photo, you'll see um, the glacier outlined in green. And like I said, for some of our drive, you will travel alongside it, which covers roughly 8% of the surface of Iceland. And it has long glacier tongues flowing towards the lowlands and glacial rivers making their way to the ocean, which is what they call the outlets. Um, so it has a surface area of approximately 8,100 square kilometers. And though it's rapidly shrinking, shrinking due to climate change, its recession is not quite as advanced as other glaciers in the world. So it is Europe's largest glacier and is classified as an ice cap glacier. And so, like I said, it covers more than 8% of the country and the average thickness of the ice is 400 meters, which is about 1,300 feet, and a maximum thickness of 1,000 meters, 3,280 feet. So it is, it's, this is a big, big glacier. It's, it's really hard to um, get it into perspective when you're driving past these huge outlets and you think, wow, that's a huge glacier, but that's, you know, a very minimal piece of it. It also holds the tallest mountain inside Iceland or in Iceland underneath the ice, as well as several volcanoes. So in the picture on the right hand side, you will see um, the photo in the previous picture that I said was the glacial outlet. Um, I've circled it here in orange. And so that's the one that we're actually seeing in that photo. So as you can see, it's it's quite um, it's quite that one's quite small compared to some of the other outlets, but it's it's just incredible how big this this is. So it boasts over 30 glacial outlets, which are channels of ice um, that flow out of the ice caps, but remain constrained on the sides by the valley. So um, just incredible. And it's greatly varying landscapes makes this unique in the world, this glacier. And nowhere else is there such a combination of dynamic ice caps, outlet glaciers, and scenic mountain grandeur. It's just, it's incredible. Um, once you get up close to it, there's a few spots where we can kind of get a little bit closer and, and you can just see how dirty it is from, from it traveling. So it's really, really interesting to see. So now we kind of get a little bit closer uh, we will take a cruise on the breathtaking Glacier Lagoon among the icebergs, and you'll see the incredible size of the glacier and the outlets that feed this lagoon. So here we get on the actual lagoon that is fed by this glacier, and you'll see icebergs. If you're lucky, you'll see one flip um, in the bottom middle corner. You'll see there's an iceberg that's a little bit more blue. Um, that one had just flipped, so then it gets that crystally clear blue. Um, there's a photo of me. I'm holding a chunk of ice. They will grab one out of the water for you, so you can hold it, and you can just see how clear it is. You can barely see that I'm even holding on to it. So we don't get too close to the actual glacier, glacier just because it is calving and it's unstable, but we do get a little bit, um, you know, closer to it so that you can see it up up closer than from the road. Um, in the top right hand corner, you'll see the the river that that the glacier water from the lagoon flows out into the ocean. And in the back, all that white is is that glacier. So that's all coming down through this channel. And this is across the road from the glacier lagoon, as you can see by the bridge there. Um, so what they call this is Diamond Beach. 
And why do you think they call it Diamond Beach? You guessed it. All the icebergs and all the ice chunks, they look like big chunks of diamonds on this black sand beach. Um, so they all eventually, or not all of them, some of them eventually will wash up onto the shore before moving into the ocean. Um, and if you're lucky, you can see some big chunks go through um, under that bridge. You can walk along there and it's really incredible. It's a really fun place to just sit and kind of iceberg watch. So, and there are some seals in there that you might get to see. They pop up every once in a while, but it's just a beautiful location. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite lunches that we had on the whole tour. So, um, but before I get into that, I'll tell you about this waterfall. So plenty of opportunities to visit some incredible waterfalls in Iceland. And uh, this waterfall, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name, um, but it's seen in the bottom right hand corner is one that you can actually walk behind. Or sorry, bottom uh, middle and uh, the one right beside it. So you can see that photo. Um, the middle bottom photo is one kind of behind it. So you can walk right behind it. And then the one on the left hand side is is kind of the front version of it. And you can see the little white specks. And those are people standing behind it. It's a really fun experience. It is a little bit rougher terrain um, and a little bit slippery, but uh, definitely doable and uh, cool to say you've been behind a waterfall. Then there's uh, Skogerfoss, which is seen in the top left, and uh, it is beautiful. It often has a rainbow at the base. Um, in this photo, you can see those sheep on the side, on the other side in the green, and uh, you definitely will get wet here too. So if you want to get anywhere close where I am in this that I've taken this photo, definitely get some spray. So highly recommend the rain pants today and the rain jacket. So plenty of opportunities to wear those. After that, um, like I said, one of my most favorite lunches in Iceland, we tour an organic greenhouse, a uh, tomato greenhouse farm. And then we get to have lunch in the greenhouse amongst the tomato plants. And we have tomato soup, which is incredible. The best tomato soup I've ever had. Um, the bread is amazing as well. And as you can see, we can add fresh basil to our soup. Um, they have potted basil plants on each table. They have scissors that you can chop it up and add it to your soup and just a great experience and delicious lunch. One of the most unique places I've probably had a meal. So it's something really fun. And as we slowly begin to make our way back towards Reykjavik, we will stop at the Great Geyser hot spring area where you can get a glimpse of it erupting. So that's in the top left-hand corner. Um, it erupts, I think, every around 30 minutes or so. So you'll have to stand there maybe for a little while. But if you if you can wait and see it, it's it does. It gets pretty high and it's pretty, pretty neat. And uh, you'll also get uh, to see the massive waterfall, Gullifoss, and um, the National Park and Rift Valley of Thingvellir. So here you can walk between two continents as seen in the middle photo. And uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we actually drive from the Eurasian plate onto the North American plate, tectonic plate. And uh, you will see the wall of the North American plate as you drive up to it. And so the tectonic plates move apart approximately 2.5 centimeters per year and have done so for millenniums. And now the effects of this movement are very clear from the park. Um, and it's just, it's really interesting to, to walk between it and, you know, hop from one, one country to the next or one tectonic plate to the next, continental divide. So lava fields fill the valley um, from the magma that welled up as the continent spread. The whole area is littered with ravines ripped open by centuries of earthquakes. And earthquakes sound scary, but um, every day in Iceland, there are earthquakes. Many of them, most of them, you do not feel. Um, I was really surprised at the end of the tour when um, our local expert asked, how many earthquakes do you think we had <laughs> during our, our time in Iceland? And I think he said over 600. So 
uh, never felt one of them. So it's uh, just, you know, a little fun fact on in a in a country like Iceland, sitting on two tectonic plates with hundreds of volcanoes, it's bound to happen. So, um, but the earthquakes do continue every day in the national park. And like I said, most are far too minor to be felt. But no volcano has gone off in the area in over 2,000 years, but they are not considered extinct. So there's still the possibility of, of um, them going off. As we saw, you know, over the last couple of years, there's been a few eruptions. Um, and just even recently, there was um, an eruption. And of course, uh, no trip to Iceland is complete without a visit to one of the world's 25 wonders, the Blue Lagoon. So you'll spend some time relaxing here and soaking up the minerals. Um, you can get a silica mask or a silica mud mask to put on your face, walk around with it all over your face. Um, it's just a, something fun to do while you're there. The water's milky blue hue is due to its high silica content. And so the silica forms soft white mud at the bottom of the lake, uh, which like I said, you can apply to your face. And the water is rich in salts and algae. And the water temperature is a beautiful uh, 37 to 39 degrees Celsius, depending on where you are in the pool. Um, but uh, yeah, you can just hop in and uh, swim around. It is quite large. There is a bar in the pool. There is um, a place where you can go get your silica mask. You don't have to scoop it off the bottom yourself. And uh, just an incredible place to visit. There's little waterfalls. You can stand underneath and get a massage on your back, and it's really great. The lagoon is actually man-made, and the water is a byproduct from the nearby geothermal power plant, which you can see in the background of the picture on the uh, left-hand side. So it's superheated water that's vented from the ground near a lava flow and is used to run the turbines that generate electricity. After going through the turbines, the steam and hot water pass through a heat exchanger to provide heat for municipal water heating systems. Then the water is fed into the lagoon. So that's how they get the blue lagoon. And uh, so you'll notice in your hotel that, that they're heated with geothermal water um, pipes. And um, when you turn on the hot water from the tap, it is hot. Right now, it's, it's, you know, at least at my house anyway, it's not hot instantly. Um, there it is. So you have to be really careful that uh, you don't burn yourself. But, and then after that, um, we're going to head back into Reykjavik. So after a relaxing morning at the pool, head back into the city for a visit to the Perlin Museum and the observation deck, which overlooks the city. And uh, you have a panoramic view all the way around the city. So you can see volcanoes way out in the, in the countryside. You can see the ocean. You can see downtown. You can see um, a fairways from the observation deck, which is uh, you can see there in the top right-hand corner um, under that dome. And you'll have um, a little bit of time to learn about the Icelandic nature inside the museum and then time to do any last minute shopping or visit some of the sites if you haven't already um, from your first day in Reykjavik. And then you'll enjoy a farewell dinner with your new friends and you can reminisce about the incredible journey that you had through Iceland and uh, make your plans to come back. And speaking of meals, uh, I don't think I mentioned at the beginning that all the meals, um, I shouldn't say all the meals, but all the breakfast and all the dinners are included plus two lunches. So um, you get you get a good amount of, of food on the tour as well. So you don't have to worry about that. And then these are just a couple of the of group shots from previous tours. So we've been doing this tour for quite some time. Um, as you can see, there's the waterfall with the with the rainbow. Um, there's a group at the Blue Lagoon. Everyone has their mask on. And uh, yeah, just enjoying beautiful Iceland. And I think there's one more photo here. Yeah, there's our friend, the goat. He likes to uh, join our bus. This is a, actually even a different tour than I was on. So uh, yeah, he's there waiting to get on the buses. 
but um, yeah, enjoying, enjoying just the incredible scenery that you'll see. And, and like I said, every turn you will see something new. It's, it's incredible. You, you hear people say that, you hear me say that, but until you experience it, it is actual. Um, you will actually see something different around every corner, it seems like, whether it's weather, whether it's uh, wildlife, whether it's landscape completely changes. So. And... I like that uh, shot in the top right, Leanne, taken on the coach. That's a great yeah. picture because you get a good shot of how the buses are and how the panoramic windows and that you really got, you know, unobstructed views of this incredible landscape as you're, you know, traveling through the country as well. So that's a great yeah. shot. Yeah, you really do. You can see you can see it all from the bus. So it's really great. And then, of course, we do a lot of photo stops on this tour. Um, mm -hmm. So you have plenty of opportunity to get off, stretch your legs. Iceland is, is a very small country. So there, the days of traveling are not long at all. Um, we, we travel short distances, but the days are longer, of course, because we are, um, you know, stopping lots and seeing lots. So um it's just a great tour and then I'll just touch on quickly so with with our international tours um we like to and with all of our tours we do pre-tour phone calls um we provide you with packing and luggage tips and especially for countries that um or destinations that have something a little bit different like Iceland with the all weather um it you know it can change from hour to hour. So uh, we'd like to provide you with packing and luggage tips, um, local currency, which we'll talk about, um, local culture, pre-trip questions. So our tour guide will phone you prior to the trip and you can ask her any of the questions, him or her, and, uh, and we can answer all your questions so you're prepared. Weather, jet lag tips, um, navigating airports, coordination of events and travel, and just making sure the trip runs smoothly. So um, our tour directors really, really do it all. And they are able to help you out and uh, make this a one-stop, one-stop shop, um, stress-free trip. And so you, all you have to do is worry about what am I going to have for lunch? Um, you know, what kind of clothes, what am I going to wear today? So it's just, it's, a great trip you don't have to worry about hotels you don't have to worry about how you're getting there we take care of it all so it's get on the bus in the morning and we've got you so okay and i'll let cindy talk about the 12 days of christmas yeah thanks thanks leanne thank you for that overview on the iceland tour that's terrific and and yeah like you said it's a country of fire and ice and around every corner you're you're faced with another beautiful changed landscape from the one you just left so it's got to be um a beautiful country to visit for sure i know it's on my bucket list and you know having um a viking background if we could say that it's obviously you know one of my heritage so i would love to be able to get there one day myself but Anyway, on to, uh, we invite you to join us in celebrating the spirit of adventure and uh, unwrap the magic of travel this December. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram starting on December 1st um, to stay updated on our 12 days of Christmas. Um, you can discover our destinations and embark on an unforgettable holiday experience. So we do have a, a special promo right now throughout the holiday season. So you can book any Westworld or Women Explorer tour between December 1st and the 31st, and you'll receive a $100 gift card as a token of our appreciation. So make sure you check us out on Facebook and follow that 12 Days of Christmas. Yes, and if you wait until Friday to book your Icelandic adventure, you will get the $100 gift card. So. Yes. Exactly. So uh, before we get into your questions, I just want to thank everyone again for spending the evening with us and part of your evening with us. We hope you found the presentation informative. 
And uh, to let you know that we will follow up with everyone that has registered for the presentation with uh, an email that will have all the pertinent information for you to look over once again and share with a friend. And, uh, and then if you have any questions, you know, you can always visit our website at westworldtours.com for more information on this tour or any of our tours. And uh, we're always here to answer your questions as well. So now it is question time. And I do see that we have a question here, Leanne. Yes. So, yes, yes you will definitely see Icelandic horses. Um, that's one of the one of the animals that you will see on the daily for the most part, um, sheep and Icelandic horses. So you see them all over the countryside. I shouldn't say daily, but um, you will have plenty of opportunity to see them um, in pastures along the roadside. Um, and if we're lucky, there may be an opportunity to stop. It just depends on where, where we see them and if there's an uh, opportunity to pull over and uh, get up close. Awesome. Thanks. So let's see if we have, just did you notice, Leanne, is there anything on Facebook? Any questions on Facebook right at the moment? No, there's nothing on Facebook right now. Okay, um, I, I do have a question uh, sure. for you, Leanne. What yeah. about like for for temperature ranges? Yes, we're going in the summer and I know the weather is totally unpredictable, but what what would you guess like the average temperatures during that time frame to be in Iceland? So in Iceland in the summer, um, temperatures range between 13 to 20 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's, you know, it's a nice comfortable temperature, um, but you could have anything in between or outside those temperatures. Um, mm -hmm. The weather is known to change quickly and often. Um, and Icelanders always say, you know, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So um, <laughs> As an example, we were traveling through one of the fjord tunnels because I believe there's two or three that we travel through on this trip. And, you know, it was starting to lightly rain and it was overcast and, and just not looking like a really great day. Um, and you know what? We come out on the other side five minutes later and it's a beautiful sunny day, no rain. And it's just, you know literally around every curve it's it's something different so it's uh it's it's really unpredictable but as long as you have a good rain jacket um layers are important i always bring um you know mini mitts and a toque especially for the glacier lagoon um i didn't wear it anywhere else but um sorry glacier lagoon and on the whale watching um, oh yeah Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's fun, and we actually had really good weather when we were there last year. So, well, I, I have to admit that the you know the weather does sound very typical of our prairie weather. Uh, as yeah. far as if you don't like the weather, wait ten minutes. But in this yes, case, it might exactly. be if you don't like the weather. Uh, Just drive, drive five ten down the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. uh, we do have another question here from Sandra, and Sandra is asking, how long is the tour and how long is the flight? Those are good questions. Yeah. So, so Sandra, uh, this tour is 10 days and uh, the flight will depend on where you're coming from. Uh, but most flights from Western Canada will be connecting through Toronto and uh, the flight from Toronto is about five and a half hours. Um, there is a direct I believe seasonally starting next year with WestJet. Um, so mm -hmm. I would imagine that would probably be around eight hours ish, give or take. Out of Calgary. Out of Calgary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Direct flight, but... I believe, out of Calgary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a great question. So thank you, Sandra, for asking those. And another question we have was about currency. What type of currency should we use in Iceland or take with us? And, you know, can we pre-order it from the bank or do we have to exchange when we get there? Yes, so currency is the Icelandic krona. And uh, you usually can order it from your bank ahead of time. Um, but you can also take it out on your on your debit card or your credit card when, upon arrival um, or get it exchanged there. Uh, Iceland is fairly expensive, I would say, compared to Canada. 
um, you know, meals and, and different things are a little bit pricier, but, um, with all your meals, your lunches and your breakfast, sorry, your dinners and your breakfast being included, that cuts down, um, for and sure, you stop at, uh, at different places for lunches where it's, it's, you know, reasonable. So, or we've had a picnic lunch, which is always fun when the weather's nice, but, uh, currency, yes, you can, you can exchange when you're there, you can order from your bank ahead of time. Um, but also credit card is widely accepted everywhere as well. So you can, Good you can definitely use your credit card. Good to know. Thanks Leah for that. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that we have any more questions. So at this point, um, hmm. just a quick reminder that you can contact us by visiting our website at westworldtours.com. You can email us at inquiries at westworldtours.com. Visit us or follow us on Facebook um, or contact your local travel agent. Uh, they're more than happy and you know familiar with our products. So they're be happy to answer any questions look up flight costs for you, take care of your insurance needs as well. And thank you again for spending part of your evening with us. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And stay tuned for our 2024 virtual presentation series in the new year. And I'd like to take the opportunity to wish everyone a wonderful holiday season. And uh, see you in 2024. And before, before you leave, uh, I just thought of something as you were talking about flights uh, through your travel agent. Uh, we do actually offer group group air on this trip, um, okay, which is uh, connects through Toronto. So you can can meet up with the group through your gateway. And uh, pricing is very reasonable. So you just yeah chat with your travel agent and we can definitely get you on our group air and uh, get you on your way to Iceland. I promise you will not regret it. It's it's an incredible place. So. And like Cindy said, wishing you all a happy holiday season. And uh, we hope to see you again in the new year. Thanks, Leanne, for your uh, sharing your joy and knowledge of Iceland with us this evening. Thank you all for joining us.